So, coming back from the Uribe Gorge trip, my intercom failed. SMH-10R. Made in Korea. It's now four years old. What happened? Well, it just cut. This is my main music player. When I tried to activate it again, this button was unresponsive. It was basically this thing that thought it was constantly being pushed. So it constantly tried, you know, speed dialing, speed dialing. I had to turn it off. I thought possibly the rain got it. Let it dry, turn it on. It worked for two minutes and then didn't do anything anymore. Charged it, light still comes on, tried resetting it, nothing. So we're going to open it up. Let's see if there's some corrosion. Maybe it can still be fixed. Because these things go for about 4,000 Rand these days. Huh? Let's try it. Okay, now the light is on. We see something. Okay, these things are not IP rated. But there is a rubber gasket around which should seal them. After removing these screws, you take off the back plate and you can see condensation. So, spending two full days in driving rain did this to it. I can only assume what has happened with the electronics. Nothing that can be seen. Oh wait, at the bottom there that looks like dirt. Alright, let's turn it around. Okay, so these are all the chips. We've got two LEDs, detailing on and the battery, the three buttons, and the reset button. In here, if you're taking it apart, there is a little rubber gasket that sits here that keeps this flap from blowing away. I don't know if I can repair this. I mean, hmm. It doesn't look like anything's wrong, so we're going to hook it up to the power and see if we can get it to speak to us again. And if that doesn't help, well, then we're going to consider it a loss and bin it. Uh, for those of you asking, why did I go for this one, not a Cardo or bigger unit? Well, when I first had a shark helmet, the shark intercom system has got a cutout in the helmet in the, uh, how do we say, the shock absorbing foam liner. And this battery sits in there perfectly. So the battery doesn't have to sit outside like on the Shoei. You've got your control unit here, the speakers and everything else is rooted completely perfectly out of the way and that's why I love this system it's so small easy to handle with gloves you only need to take two push two buttons to turn it on backwards forwards easy they've now released a newer version higher bluetooth ratio and all that but look the only people I speak to inside my helmet are the voices in my head and the rest of this is just being used to a answer a telephone call in an emergency and to listen to the tunes to keep me sane. So let's try to hook this thing up. Huh. And it works again. Amazing. I'm guessing all the moisture maybe made contact with another one. Hmm. This one was the problem. There's still tactile response. Yes. And it even registered. Yeah, this one, let's see, negative. Okay. Yeah, everything seems to work again. Okay, so I guess I don't have to throw it away. So, how do we fix this or stop this from happening in future? Well, first off, we've got to leave this in a very warm place to make sure all the moisture is cooked out of the circuitry, maybe underneath the switches as well. Same goes with this one. We're going to clean it, maybe squirt a bit of WD-40 for water dispersion. The same goes for the rear, to make sure that's fine. And of course, we're going to take a bit of silicone grease and re-lube this gasket. Like I said, these things are not waterproof as per manufacturer but they do withstand it i mean come on four years and it still bloody works so happy days hopefully this doesn't happen again while i'm on tour but if it does yeah at least i know how to take this out so that was an smh10r for oh, troubleshooting i suppose <laughs> worth it